Welcome everyone, Mr. Pasco here, video lesson number six. Today's question of the day says, how can a coordinate plane show us equivalent ratios? Let's go ahead and start with the refresher. It says, locate, graph, and label the ordered pairs on the coordinate plane below. Before we do that, let's label our coordinate plane to the right. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the components that make up a coordinate plane. You can see that there's a horizontal number line, that number line that goes left to right. That is known as our x-axis. Also, there is a vertical number line. Some of you may remember the saying y to the sky. So that's our y-axis. Together, combined, they make something called a coordinate plane. You can see that I labeled each number line 0 through 10 because each unit represents 1. So let's go ahead and get started on number one. We have the ordered pair three comma one. Now, to take this one nice and slow, we know in order to plot this point, it first goes x comma y. What that means is you move horizontal first. So three comma one means you go right three and then up one. That's how you locate and graph. Now you have to give it a name by labeling it three comma one. Continuing here, 8, 4 means you start at the origin. You move right 8 and then up 4. That's how you locate and graph. Label it 8, 4. Two more to go here. 4, 8 means you go right 4, up 8. Notice the differences between 4, 8 and 8, 4. Lastly, in number 4, 0, 7. This is always a tricky one for students. 0, 7 means you start at the origin, you move right 0, and just go up 7. So this ordered pair actually lies right on the y-axis. I've seen many students plot it right on the x-axis, just like I did. But if you were to take a look and investigate that point just a little further, that means that we would start at the origin, we would move right 7, and then up 0. So in this case, that would be the point 7, 0. Recognize how important the order is between the x and the y coordinates. Let's go ahead and get started on example number one. Peter was saving his $8 weekly allowance so that he could purchase a new video game. His weekly savings is shown in the table below. So it looks like we have a ratio table. It's a vertical ratio table after one week. He has saved $8 after two weeks. He has saved $16. That pattern is going to continue all of the way through. You can either use repeated addition or you can use multiplication. After three weeks, he's going to save 8 times 3, which is 24. Okay, and lastly, four weeks will save him $32. So the first question says, at the same rate, how much would Peter have saved after three weeks? So here's three weeks. If we move over to the right, it looks like he has saved 3 times 8, which is $24. The next question says, how many weeks would it take Peter to save $32? Well, here it is, $32. If we move towards the left, you can see that it takes 4 weeks for Peter to save $32. The next question says, how much would Peter have saved after 7 weeks? The way I answer this question is I like to extend my ratio table just one row more. We have seven weeks here. I like to use the multiplication relationship between equivalent ratios. I know that one times seven is seven. So whatever I have to do to the left side, I have to do to the right side to keep equivalent ratios. Eight times seven is 56. So the question, how much would Peter have saved after seven weeks? Peter would have saved $56 after seven weeks. The next question says, plot Peter's savings data from the table on the coordinate grid below. Be sure to give the graph a title, label the axes, and label each point with the ordered pair. So let's go ahead and do that now. Before we plot some of these points, let me just explain how we ended up labeling our graph. My x-axis, I labeled weeks. That's my first column. So I labeled my x-axis weeks. Note that I did start at zero still. Okay, I did start at zero, and I moved all the way to the right to get 10. Now my vertical axis, my y-axis, is a little different. I made each of these units worth eight. The reason why I did that is if you were to take a look at the ratio table above, 
it looks like we're going up by an interval of eight. So that just seemed easiest for me to graph each unit having an interval of eight. The way I titled my, my y-axis was the second column that I have was called total amount saved. And lastly, the way that I ended up titling my entire coordinate plane was based on the title of the ratio table. So let's go ahead and start plotting some of these points. I know that Peter saved $8.00 after one week. That would just be one comma eight. After two weeks, he saved $16, two comma 16. After three weeks, $24. After four weeks, Peter saved $32. So we don't have the other points except for after seven weeks. So let's go all the way up to seven weeks. After seven weeks, Peter has saved a total of seven comma 56. So he saved a total of $56. The last question says, if the cost of the video game is $58.95, how many weeks will Peter have to save his allowance to purchase the game? So we don't have that information just yet, but I think that you can see the relationship between these equivalent ratios. Okay, this is a constant change. It's a straight line going straight up. Now, we know after seven weeks, he has saved $56. He can't buy the video game just yet. He's short about, what, $3. So what he has to do is he's going to have to wait another week. Why? It's because after eight weeks, he has saved $64. I wrote, Peter will have to save for eight weeks to buy his video game. That's video lesson number six on coordinate planes and equivalent ratios. I hope that you're able to see the relationship between equivalent ratios and how they look on a coordinate plane, how the change is consistent, how it's a straight line. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you.